Hello YouTube, Fuzz here. Welcome back to our Final Fantasy IX Excalibur 2 perfect game playthrough series. And if you're following along with the Thomas's walkthrough, this is going to be covering section D3-04. And I'm going to be covering at least the first part of this particular episode up until the first save point uh, live. So we're going to go ahead and record the commentary as we're playing here. Hopefully we'll be able to get it all done in a single take. I have practiced this before recording, so we'll see how we get on. And we're going to begin by just heading down to the wardrobe here where Blank will commence a cutscene for us. And we're going to select the second option, how did I get here? If you select the first option about Dagger, then you're not going to be able to enter the Royal Chamber immediately. You're going to waste time. And that's what we need to do. So to speed things up a touch, we'll get to the cutscene. There's going to be a lot of cutscenes in this opening section. Up until the first save point, really. And also some forced ATEs. I think at least three forced ATEs. Once you get control of Zidane, you want to head to the lift and then go to the upper level where we're going to make our way over to the Royal Chamber, which is just up these stairs. Now, at any point you want to enter the Royal Chamber, you do have to go ahead and speak to a guard on the outside first. So even though it doesn't look like they have much to say, you do need to do that or you won't be able to actually go in the room. So now we have quite a, a lot of dialogue scenes to get through, so just mash the X button. There is a forced ATE here as well. The first of several, as I mentioned. And this is about poor Dagger, who's just reminiscing over the fact that everything seems to be going wrong for her in her life at the moment. And we'll see how that affects her shortly in due course. And here's the second of our four ATEs. Kuja up to his no good tricks again. Okay, and hopefully Dr. Top might be able to do something that will help Regent Sid. He's probably fed up of being an oglob. But the latest revelation is that Princess Garnet is actually unable to speak since her trauma. So it's probably worth going to visit her now that we've learned about this. And so once you've got control of your party, head back to the guest room. And from here you'll have a scene involving Dr. Tot, Ico, Steiner and of course Dagger who isn't speaking right now. <laughs> so not much we can do for Dagger at the moment then. However, Regent Sid, we might be able to help. So there's a possible medicine that Dr. Tot is willing to put together for us if we can get the ingredients. And the ingredients are going to be three potions, which will hopefully form a concoction that will bring Regent Sid back to normal. So once you've got control of Zidane again, we're going to head back down to the mid-level and actually make our way out of the castle and into the, uh, you know, the town of Limblum itself. So I'm just going to slow things down since the analogue control is going to be really annoying at times. When you're trying to move around. We'll start by going to the theatre district. Which is what uh, we're told to do in the Thomas's Guide. Though it actually makes no difference whatsoever. Whether you cover the events of the theatre district. Or the business district first. Inevitably we have to go to both anyway. So once we leave the air cab terminal. We're going to be greeted by another cutscene. Which will lead to another forced ATE. 
You might remember we saved these folks earlier on. And it looks like they've got a nice family going now. Okay. So once we've got control of Zidane, head down to the Tantalus hideout. There'll be another cutscene here. And what's going to happen is we're going to get the first part of our potion, which is the unusual potion. And then Zidane is automatically going to leave this area at the end of this cutscene. But we need to come back because we can actually go into the hideout and see that the chests have been replenished with some nice amounts of gill. About, uh, about 7,000 gill actually in total. Amongst all three chests. So it is worth grabbing those. Okay, and now we can leave the hideout area. But before we leave this district, there's one more part of the potion we need to get. And if we head down into the artist's residence, we can speak to the artist himself. And he'll tell us he doesn't know where to find it. But he also tells us that we can go ahead and collect it if it's in his studio. Which, guess what? It is. This isn't it. But that's another item we want to pick up. And then over here in the corner... We have the potion itself. This is the strange potion. And the next part of our concoction. Uh, and now we're done here in the theatre district. So we can make our way over to the business district. Let's just speed things up again. Okay, so just go into the building opposite, which is the inn. And we're not going to save at this point. There's no reason to, really. Uh, but we are going to do the Mognet. Oh, come on, the stupid analog controls. So we've got Mudon's letter for Mogkey. Okay, that's so all we're going to do there. But we do need to do it. And then we're going to head north, once we've left the inn here anyway. Into the Market Square. Where we're going to find the next part of the potion. The next and final part, actually, of the potion. So here we have Alice, and she has the beautiful potion. Okay, so we're sorted. Uh, but before we go back to the castle, we're just going to head over to the synthesis shop. And we're going to stock up on cotton robes. To make lots of gill next time we're at a shop. But we're also going to stock up on desert boots as well. So get 99 of each. So that's 99 desert boots and 99 cotton robe. And then we're going to make our way uh, back to the castle. Just a note, if you come here before coming to the theatre district, uh, you can actually ask the synthesis shop owner about the potion. Don't bother doing it though. Just go straight to actually doing the synthesis option. Otherwise you'll waste time. Right, so let's make our way back to the castle. And we'll see if Dr. Top can do anything with his ingredients we've collected for him. And bring Regent Sid back to his normal self. Okay, so we'll find them back at the Royal Chamber. Which means going back to the upper level on the lift. Just slow down so we can actually go through the door here. And now speed up again. And see what happens when Sid takes the potion that Dr. Tot has made for him. Is he better? No, he's a frog.
Okay, so we've got our story destination in place, but it's going to be a while before we make our way over there. So we're going to head over to the lift again. This time we're going to go down to the base level. And get ready because we were about to be getting our first vehicle for the world map. So head over to this one here which will take us to Serpent's Gate. But before we actually exit this area, loot this chest. And then all we're going to do is head up to the ladder and board the balloon uh, Noctis. Narcis even. <laughs> yeah, don't uh, bring Regent Sid around Queena. Uh, we want Vivi, Dagger and Queena in the party. And we get our control tutorial. So fairly simple, I'm sure. And what we're going to do is make our way over to... An island just to the west. There it is. It's got these chocobo tracks on. And we're going to be doing some chocobo. Or sorry, choco, choco graph hunting. I'll just disable uh, stuff. Enemy encounters. And you can go ahead and save according to Thomas's guide at this point. But let's just get to where we need to get to first. And if you just go around here. Follow the light blue area. Slow things down a touch so that I can actually concentrate on what I'm doing. Wow. There it is. So this is the way we need to go. Let's go a little bit faster, shall we? And if you just go around the other side, so it's the long way around really. Then we can, we're actually going into this area here. See if I can turn the camera around so you can see. Okay, that's Chocobo Lagoon. But before we do that, we are just going to pop off and save. So we are going to be hunting two Choco Graphs and a Choco Graph piece in this next section. So the guide recommends that you try and get at least one uh, of those things, you know, on each attempt. So um, if you don't get anything when you play the game out of, you know, a Choco Graph piece or a Choco Graph, then restart and try again. Uh, I didn't do that because we're so far ahead of schedule. Just to save myself some real life time, I did about four games at once to try and get something in those four games. And if I didn't get anything in the four games that we needed, then I would restart at that point. So I do end up using a little bit more time than the guide recommends, but we're so far ahead of schedule now, about 45, 50 minutes ahead of schedule. But I didn't mind adding an extra five, six minutes onto my time here. Right, that said, what do we actually need to get from here on this particular visit to Chocograph Lagoon? What we do need, or Chocobo Lagoon, what we do need to get, as I say, is a Chocograph piece. But we also need to get the following two Chocographs. Dawn Lagoon and Dusk Plains. Now, you can get other Chocographs here. Indeed, I do end up getting a third one, which ends up getting included in my save game. Uh, I can't remember which one off the top of my head. But they're the two you do need to get. Dawn Lagoon and Dusk Plains. So on this particular attempt of chocographing, I do get a chocograph piece. And then later on, uh, I do end up getting the two chocographs that I need. And I do have to reset a few times, probably about eight or nine times of resetting and reloading my save game. So when you get a chocograph piece or a chocograph, what you want to do is head back out of chocograph, uh, Chocobo Lagoon, uh, go back to the beach and save your game, then check what it was that you got. And if you got a chocograph, uh, in terms of those two that I mentioned, which are, uh, I forgot what they're called now, Dawn Lagoon or Dust Plains, then reload your save game that you've just created and go and get the next one. Okay, the reason for reloading your save game is that you don't include the time then that it took you to look which one you got. And if you didn't get the uh, right one and you want to restart, then reload your previous save game. Okay, so once you've got the right one or one of the right chocographs, when you do make your save, make it as a separate save file so you're not overwriting the one that you've just did uh, when you first got to the beach. Hopefully that makes sense. But please do check out Thomas's guide. If it doesn't, the link for that is in the description as per usual. So what I'm going to do now is just hunt down the final one of these chocographs. I've got everything else that I need. Um, I've got dust planes and I have the chocograph piece. 
So I do just need to get the Dawn Lagoon Chocolate Graph. And it is important we get that one because we are going to be doing it straight after this. So there's a Garshaw Greens. That's not what I want. But I'm pretty sure this is the attempt where I do get it. So my Choco Beak now is level 17. There is a trophy in this game to get it to 99. There's a Choco Graph. And you don't get extra time in this particular place like you did in the Chocobo Forest. If you get four items, you just end the Chocobo Graph hunting but get some more experience for Choco. So again, so I got a Choco Graph, I do go up to the bank, save, check I got the right one, which I did, Dawn Lagoon. And once I'm happy that I've got everything, Dawn Lagoon, Dusk Plains, we're going to carry on with the final section of today's walkthrough. Don't worry about Abandoned Lagoon, by the way. You can see I've got Dust Plains and Dawn Lagoon and the Choco Graph. Choco Graph piece as well. Uh, Dawn Lagoon is the one that we're after right now. So we're going to go ahead and make our way back to the Blue Narcissus. And I'm going to try and do that uh, with the lovely controls that the game gives us. So we do have to go the long way around here once more. You can go in speed mode as well. But to be honest, the shallow waters have so many nooks and crannies in them that you keep getting stuck. At least that's my opinion or my experience, I should say. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this the slow way. As we make our way back to the ship here. There we go. And we're just going to board the boat. Said the boat. Want to turn off uh, enemy encounters here because it is possible to get them even on this short little journey there. And now we're going to make our way east. Let's just speed things up at this point. So I did lose a little bit of time with the Choco Graph hunting because I was doing three or four games at a time rather than one and then resetting if I failed. The reason for that, uh, that I did it that way, was simply because, as I said earlier, because we were making up uh, time earlier on, I didn't mind having to go ahead and uh, lose a bit of time there. So we're going to call Choco again with our Guy Shaw Greens. And we're going to go ahead and uh, bring him over to the east hand side of this particular island. There's a small island you see. Around about here I believe. Let me just turn the map around so that we can see. Uh, it might be this one actually. I do get confused with all these stupid islands. Okay, it's this one here, and it's around about here. And trying to pinpoint it can be a pain. Ah, we got it, wonderful. So this is an important one to get the Dawn Lagoon. Because it's going to give us an upgrade to our Choco's abilities. So at the moment he can walk across shallow waters, which he'll still be able to do, of course. But that's not all he'll be able to do in a moment's time. Let's just speed this up. So Fat Chocobo turns us red, and we now have the ability not only to traverse shallow waters, but mountains as well. That doesn't include uh, these kinds of mountains here, okay? So just bear that in mind. You still have to enter and exit the water by going up on beaches. So what we're going to do now is traverse the mountain range, and over on the other side, it should bring us into a nice view of Trino. whoop de doo da So we'll head inside there next. And first thing we're going to do is equip Queena. Because Queena is going to be battling for us at the start of the next episode. So Queena is going to want the Needle Fork. Brilliant. Uh, she's going to want the Bone Wrist. And also the Running Shoes as well. And if we go into Abilities... Queena is going to be having auto haste and add status. Okay, so all that's left to do now is to head over to the Moogle to save. That's literally going to be all we have to do here in Trino for today's episode. And then we'll be doing the rest uh, when we pick up again in D305 next time. And we don't, we've got no magnet to do here. 
So I was in my own world then. I thought I'd click to the bottom. There we go. That's better. All right then, guys. So let's save up and then we'll have a look at our time, shall we? So the target time is 7 hours and 47 minutes, 47 seconds. So this is classed as a 25 minute, 15 second session. And I probably spent about 10 minutes doing chocograph hunting in the game time situation. Which is probably about twice as long as the game actually gives you. So the, the Thomas's walkthrough actually gives you. So I might have lost about 5 minutes doing that. Uh, but we're so far ahead of schedule, I was happy to... Uh, do it that way. I even ended up with an extra chocograph as well. So 7 hours and 6 minutes is my time. So we're still about 41 minutes ahead of the uh, walkthrough schedule. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, but thanks for stopping by today folks. I hope this little video has helped you. And that you'll come back soon for more FF9. See you then. Goodbye. Take care.